And uh, Mark, this was a general shift in mood when it comes to try and, uh, you know, escape the, the risk of escalating Washington-Beijing tensions. But what we're seeing here or hearing is that perhaps this could happen much sooner than expected. The big question is, is Apple the one pushing these suppliers at this point to make these moves, right? And we don't know the answer to that. Uh, Gertek hasn't said that. My opinion would probably be that these suppliers, including Gertek in China, are anticipating that Apple is going to want to make some sort of ship from China to other regions, so they're trying to get ahead of that. There's also the possibility that they are trying to avoid the ongoing tensions we see between China and other regions, including the U.S., so they're making that move on their own in anticipation of that, too. Not to mention, of course, the closing down of the whole country during COVID-19. But, Mark, how difficult is it to just shift supply chains, to, you know, take all of the equipment out of a country, the, the factories, the people, the, the know-how to put it in a whole different country? Yeah, it's so difficult that that's just not going to happen, right? You're not going to see that happen. What you're going to see is Apple gradually set up additional uh, manufacturing sites for final assembly, for them to push their suppliers to create additional sites uh, for final assembly. So you're not going to see this wholesale shift that some believe uh, out of China. What you're going to see is a duplication or replication of the process. So they're going to keep the manufacturing they have for their core products, the iPhone, the Apple Watch, you name it in China. But as those unit sales and the demand demand continues to grow over time, you'll see them create new lines of manufacturing, places like India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Ireland, you name it, you're going to see expansions all over. That does seem like it's a huge opportunity if they can get that capacity and know-how and all of the things that Sherry mentioned for these markets like India and in Vietnam. Is it just about the cost, though? Are we seeing more and more U.S. companies moving out of China for, for, for other reasons? Yeah, I mean, for Apple, they're in such a tricky position because, as you know, they get about a quarter of their annual business from China. Right? So if there's a situation where China decides that Apple can no longer operate in the region, that's about a $100 billion annual loss. That's not something that Apple can do. Right? It's going to be too destructive to the company. So any shifts they make, any changes they make to their supply chain have to be so marginal. Because there's really a kind of a trade-off there, where Apple does a lot of their manufacturing, a lot of their business with China. They bend to requirements and laws from the Chinese government from time to time, because they really want to keep that relationship strong so they don't lose all those annual sales, right? There's the sense of what's the right thing to do from a moral standpoint or a belief standpoint. And then there is the question of what's the right thing to do from a business standpoint, right? And at the end of the day, Apple's a business. Uh, they have a fiduciary duty to their shareholders, their employees, uh, and, and you know other stakeholders and partners. So there really is that fine line that the company really has to work with when making China-related decisions.